National interest groups with his unqualified support for NAFTA. But the senator didn't deliver his pro-free trade pitch in this country, where millions of jobs have been lost as a result of those agreements. Instead, he went to Canada to talk to their business elites. And Senator Obama today also pandering for votes in Florida, trying to convince ethnocentric special interest groups there that he should have their votes. Our coverage tonight begins with Dana Bash with a McCain campaign in, of all places, Ottawa. Dana. Well, John McCain's visit here to Canada was quite unusual. It was a campaign trip where the candidate insisted it wasn't about politics. No, this isn't a battleground state. It's Canada. There aren't any electoral votes to be won up here in the middle of a presidential election. <laughs> Before his visit, advisors called this a chance to establish differences with Barack Obama on NAFTA, the U.S. trade agreement with Canada and Mexico. He did, subtly. Threatening to abrogate an agreement that has increased trade and prosperity is nothing more than retreating behind protectionist walls. That was intended as a shot at Obama's rhetoric during the Democratic primaries against the agreement. I don't think NAFTA has been good for America, and I never have. But in Canada, McCain refused to really engage. This is not a political campaign trip. Surreal, since at the same time, McCain's campaign was seizing on the day's theme, firing off emails on what appeared to be an Obama change in tone on NAFTA. Suggesting to Fortune magazine his anti-NAFTA rhetoric during the primaries was overheated. In Florida, Obama tried to clarify his stance on NAFTA. He didn't have enforceable labor and environmental agreements uh, in that agreement. But back in Ottawa, where the candidate who crossed the border to talk trade just wouldn't go there. I, can, I cannot here. I, ca I can as soon as I return to the United States. But that would then lend a, a political bent to this visit. <laughs> Because we didn't feel it was appropriate for the taxpayers, while I am the nominee uh, of my party, to pay for a trip at, that would have uh, accrued to the cost of the taxpayers. Now, McCain often points to his extensive experience traveling around the world as a senator is one of the reasons why he thinks voters should elect him. He said today that he is going to continue traveling abroad during the presidential campaign. But if his trip here to Canada was any example, it's a pretty tough task for a candidate to travel anywhere during the heat of the campaign and insist it's not about politics. Lou. Uh, but at the same time, he would have been roundly criticized, Dana, would he not, if he had been sitting on Canadian, standing on Canadian soil, uh, engaging in uh, presidential politics. Well, it's a, it's a possibility, and from his perspective, clearly a probability. I mean, what his campaign said today, Lou, is that from his perspective, he's old school. Unlike some politicians that you've seen lately, he abides by the old adage that politics, from his perspective, still should end at the water's edge, or in this case, in the northern border. Yeah. Lou. Dana, thank you very much. Dana Bash from Ottawa. Well, Senator McCain certainly working to earn the title, Mr. Free Trade. In addition to his enthusiastic support for NAFTA, the senator has also voted for all sorts of trade deals, voting for trade deals with Oman, Singapore, Chile, Vietnam, Central American nations, and African nations. And just in case there's any doubt, back in December, Senator McCain said he would seek deals with more countries, saying, quote, I'm the biggest free marketer and free trader you will ever see, end quote. Senator McCain's position on free trade and its impact on working people in this country and our middle class shouldn't be much of a surprise when we consider just who's giving the senator economic advice. None other than Carly Fiorina, the former CEO of Hewlett-Packard. She presided over the thousands of layoffs at Hewlett-Packard and was ultimately fired herself. But not before she received a $21 million severance package and more than a half million dollars in mortgage assistance. And it was Carly Fiorina who defended outsourcing of American middle class jobs to chief overseas labor markets by saying, quote, there's no job that is America's God given right anymore. Senator McCain is trying to have it both ways on the issue of illegal immigration as well. He's doing it by pandering, of course, to ethnocentric interest groups. He assured in Chicago Hispanic leaders at a late night meeting 
that he would help push through legislating uh, through legislation, uh, giving uh, immigration reform a top priority, giving amnesty to millions of illegal aliens. Rosano Polito, a conservative Republican of Hispanic origin, was at the meeting, and she was troubled by many of the things Senator McCain had to say. She joins us tonight from Chicago. Good to have you with us. Thanks, Lou. It's a privilege. Uh, this, uh, this meeting, uh, the McCain campaign objecting to the reports that it was secret. Was it secret? It was private. It was a private meeting. Right. And who, and who was there? What group? What umbrella? Well, the uh, Republican Hispanic uh, Assembly uh, was one of the sponsors of it. And there was a lot of different people. Uh, including uh, Illinois State Senator Martin Sandoval, who I know to be a Democrat. Right. And, uh, and what did the senator say? I mean, what is the point of this meeting? I, he had said to us all uh, for months that uh, uh, he had learned one thing in the campaign, and that was border security first. In this meeting, he said something quite differently, apparently. That's correct. I was hopeful um, hearing that John McCain got it. One day he got it that we want enforcement first. And so I was hopeful going to the meeting, but all I heard was the mantra was con comprehensive immigration reform that to me, as an illegal immigration activist, is a code word for amnesty. The crowd cheered uh, every time he mentioned those words, those code words. And he also made a statement that did you know that Spanish was the first language spoken in my home state of Arizona before English, mm -hmm. the crowd went crazy. You know, the senator is absolutely wrong. Uh, Spanish was not the first language spoken in the state of Arizona. In point of fact, uh, there were a, a host of uh, Indian dialects, uh, Native American dialects spoken there uh, for hundreds of years before there was any Spanish spoken in Arizona. So somebody needs to counsel uh, the good senator, when he's pandering to ethnocentric interest groups, uh, he probably offended a great deal, uh, uh, a great number of people uh, who are Native Americans from his home state. Don't you? Don't you think? Absolutely. And he offended me as a conservative, uh, a Republican. Um, I wish he would pander to me as, as a conservative. That's what I would like—a little pandering our way. But as far as I'm concerned, John McCain is kicking the conservatives to the curb. Well, we thank you very much, Rosanna Polito, for being Luke. here. Uh, we, uh, by the way, ask uh, the McCain campaign to clarify what the senator was saying, what he meant, and the purpose of such a, uh, a dialogue, if you will. Uh, they had no response or reply.